First of all, the fake sexy shit, drop it. Um, secondly, yeah, I was muted. What I'm saying is I do so many different things in my life. I don't come out of a cryogenic tube when it's time to do the show. So when I'm organizing the show, I'm also parenting, and I parent every day right now, which was an unexpected change recently. A uh, new job schedule I'm working on, like at my work, different schedule. Uh, I'm also doing stuff like keeping my house together and blah, 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 blah. So when I forget to update stream info or hit mute on my mic, like, it's not a big fucking deal. And I hate that people type about it in all caps. It's one reason why it takes me so long to get back to doing a show, because I've been so stressed out since stuff happened last August that, uh, you know, everything about it gives me anxiety. And now here we are. So, okay, and uh, whatever. So I'm going to cook. And uh, all we're doing tonight is something simple. We're making uh, sloppy joes and asparagus. And, I mean, one of the reasons we're doing an early show is because I literally have to feed my kid, too, so I can't cook twice, you know. <laughs> so, I, I mean, I could, but I'd rather not. So that's what we're doing. So um, we're going to make sloppy joes. And, um, all right. I hate comments like that, though, so that has to be timed out. Oh, how do you... There we go. Cool. Eh, all right, cool. Sloppy Joe's. I love Sloppy Joe's. Everybody that's been saying, uh, talking about, like when I promoted the, the food tonight and stuff, what I'm going to make, everybody was talking about how they want, uh, how they haven't had Sloppy Joe's in a long time. I feel like there are more regular occurrence out here in the Midwest because I live in South Dakota. I don't know, but there's something that like gets brought to... Uh, like, uh, you know, potlucks and lunches and stuff like that. So the reason I got on this Sloppy Joe kick is that uh, someone at my job uh, retired late, uh, recently. And we are going to throw her a surprise party for her retirement. And her husband was planning it with everybody at work, and it was going great. She had no fucking idea. But she wanted to have a party, so she organized a party bus... And these are old people, but old people that can fucking put them down, right? So this lady organizes a party bus and has us all, she wants everyone to leave work early, get on the party bus with her. We're going to go hit up some bars, her three or four favorite bars, and go back to her house and, and hang out there. In the meantime, we were organizing a huge-ass surprise party with, like, everybody she knew. At the country, at the golf course across the street from where she lives, uh, at the like club clubhouse thing at the golf course, and uh, with tons of food and everything, she had no idea. And here's how much she didn't have an idea. And so she asked her husband, "Hey, uh, we, you know, after the party bus, everyone's going to be here. We're going to be drinking. People are going to want food. So can you like make a whole bunch or order like from a deli or something a whole bunch of sloppy Joe and a bunch of buns?" <laughs> and she. And, you know, her husband, knowing that we were not ever going to end up at her house and instead go to this party with a whole bunch of food already planned that he's buying, is like, okay, so he did it. 
<laughs> so he bought all this Sloppy Joe stuff and bonds just to contribute to tricking his wife. And she had no fucking idea, and she was so surprised. It was great. But so then, like, at work, we're just eating Sloppy Joes, like, for three days because it was a massive amount that uh, had nowhere to go. So, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Put that stuff in a crock pot, and it lasts a while. I was just saying, Midwest, we know how it works. So, anyways, um, what we're going to do first, then, is we got to get the beef cooking for the Sloppy Joe. So, first, we're going to melt some butter. And do that. Oh, and oil. Um, tea, just a teaspoon of olive oil is all we need. All right. So that's the butter melting cam right now. And just a little bit. Eh, a teaspoon's worth. Eh. Okay, that's probably fine. A surprise zucchini? Uh, no, not really. I mean, uh, it's not a different time, but I was talking about it yesterday and promoted it and stuff. But yeah. Are you using tomato paste or a sloppy joe sauce? I'm not using a sloppy joe sauce. I think I did make, well, last time I made something, maybe I did skip a, didn't I do something uh, that was pre-made, but I hardly ever do that. Anyways, yes, I'm using tomato paste. Um, so first up, we're gonna do that and get the, uh, what the fuck, see, my burners are so weird, man. Is there smoke coming up on the camera? Uh, these burners trap every little thing and burn the shit out of them forever. It's, and I just, I don't know. Anyways, there's a little bit of smoke happening, but it's fine. Uh, I'm sure everybody will freak out about it, just like how I dared to not write Sunday. And it's not like I even wrote Thursday. It's because it was still there from Thursday. Like, cool your jets. Wait, I don't want to cut the asparagus quite yet, actually. I don't need to do that. I need to do the onion and the garlic. And the green pepper. Uh, so how's everybody doing? I haven't been on the thing in a while. Uh, the stream. But see, I wasn't even wrong, Abby. I just didn't update it yet. Sam's hot take on guns and video games. As in, they're not... They don't have shit to do with each other. I'm not going to get into all that stuff. You guys know I'm fucking lefty as shit. And that, uh, for me, okay, I'll say one thing. Sure, why not? For me, it's, uh, like people, you know, uh, we're so behind on ever even getting anything go going with this, uh, with, with changing the way, you know, gun safety works in this country. And it's because, you know, it's one, mostly one side that, uh, and here's how it works. This used to be a stand-up bit of mine, but basically... Whenever somebody talks about talks about having a conversation about planning to talk about putting something on the calendar to have a conversation about talking about planning a discussion to talk about conversing to maybe plan out a schedule to talk about conversing to talk about having a sit down to meet and put it on the calendar to maybe talk about conversing on a few points to talk about discussing to possibly change one tiny bit of a gun law, one, another side of people go, oh my God, they're going to make us wear Joe, St Joseph Stalin costumes to take all our guns, you know? So we're never going to get anywhere because, like, the first thing they do is say, you can't politicize it, and then they say, like, we're not going to talk about it. And then they just wait for the next one and say it again, you know? So it's a bunch of horse shit. Nothing's ever going to change unless we sharpen the guillotines. And, like, you know, I live in the Midwest. So I know that people have guns. It's fine. But, like, obviously, obviously, <laughs> there, you know, there needs to be a change. And, you know, a great point that I saw on Twitter uh, this morning from one of the kids from the, uh, that went to Florida a couple years ago, uh, David Hogg, uh, he said, you know, it's a good point. He's like, the shooter at my school, which is a crazy thing that someone has to say to differentiate the shooter from their school and another place. Uh, he's like, they both waited till they were old enough to buy it, so maybe the laws do do something, which is a great point. And we're one of the only countries where this happens like this, so, you know. Red Ecker Kane, or however you say that, you're, you're totally right. Critical Moment, maybe that would work. I mean, here's the thing, Critical Moment, that's a joke that Critical Moment made personally. I think we should ask everyone to stop shooting people. You know what, though? We haven't even tried that. Like, that, we have not tried anything. And it's because one side whines even when you, like, mention talking about it. 
the other side is too afraid to get, make the other side wide, so they don't do anything either. You know, it's like, it's just endless, you know? And, you know, I was sitting at my job, hearing, watching the news about this shit while my kid was still in school, and just, you know, same age as some of the kids that died. It's crazy. Crazy that we even have to, like, have that mental... Uh, we even have to have that even happening in our brains. You know what I mean? Fuck everything. You know, but fuck everybody. So, are the sloppy joes done yet? I don't know. Are you done bitching? Okay. Star Wars is as relevant as ever to your Star Wars gun control bit. Bobby, shit. Bobby uh, and I have done stand up together. Um, I don't remember. Oh, oh, the thing about. Yeah, well, that's a real thing. Like, so, uh. I don't remember how how the bit went, but it was based on a real meme. I saw some anti-gun control person post about how uh, something about something about that scene where Anakin kills those younglings, you know, when he turned when he's turning into Darth Vader in Episode Three, and it was something about how he would still be able to do that even if lightsabers were illegal or something. Or maybe it was about how Jedi could make their own lightsabers. I can't remember what the point was. They're trying to use Star Wars and Jedi and lightsabers to argue against gun control. Which, you know, I mean, the, the way I ended my thing, I made a few points, and the way I ended it was said, uh, you know, you're talking about a fictional universe full of space wizards. So, you know, that's your dud right there. So, anyways. Wrong stars right. Butt stuff in their pussies. But anyways, uh, yeah, it was a, it was like a crazy meme that somebody passed around that trying to justify not having gun control because Anakin murdered children too or something. <laughs> it was amazing, an amazing argument. Um, but yeah, so you know, I'm not even gonna say like what I think we should do or what about that. I think it's just like we can't, we can't even fucking get together and talk about it at all yet. So, people, you know, fuck us. We suck. You know, we're letting children get murdered, and then we can't even fucking uh, try. Like, it's not even having a solution. We can't even try to talk about a solution yet. We're just a bunch of fucking garbage assholes. None of us deserve our freedom. Zero people. And even more, the people that turn into the far lane when they're turning left onto the street, they deserve their freedom even less than the rest of us, you know? The Tommy Salami, the DMV for guns is totally what we should have. Um, okay, so half a large yellow onion mince. Oh, we only need half of this? All right. Yeah, dude, I mean, someone just mentioned that, like, the original uh, villains of Star Wars were meant to be Republicans, and probably in the prequels, too, and you think about who was in power then in both cases, you know, because uh, what was going on? When Lucas was writing the first Star Wars, it didn't come out till 1977, but he'd been working on it for a while. And, I mean, goddamn absolutely based those fuckers on, like, Nixon and people like that, you know? So. Anyways, the world sucks. We're failing our children. We're failing our sick people. And we should all be put to the guillotine. Just let me get my kid to turn 18 first so she can move away and go live in France or whatever she wanted to do, so. Yeah, day John time to exactly. There's a lot of dumb bullshit laws, and really, it's not, I saw someone else say this, and you know, I know it's just tweets or whatever, but people make good points on there sometimes, and they're worth repeating. You know, um, I saw somebody say, you know, it's not that the, uh, the right-wingers and the Ted Cruz's, they're not worried about gun rights. They're worried about gun sales. And that's totally fucking 100% right. That's all they care about, you know? So, and that's where they are right now. They're all, you know, murdering hookers in their hotel rooms at an NRA convention, you know? So. Any thoughts on homeschooling, or is that out of the question? Well, I, uh, you know, I have ADHD and anxiety, which I have displayed both quite adequately already today. And it's 420 right now in the Midwest. Anyways, uh, no. So now th that's not th something I would do. My mom could probably do it. She taught all of us kids how to read when we were each like three, you know. Um, so, you know, she could do that. Uh, but, no, I, 
but I don't know. And the thing is, is besides you know that and worrying about their safety, like my town for having a bunch of ignorant pieces of shit in it and way too many corrupt right wing dudes. I mean, yeah. The more I find out about how people in power here behave, the more I want to become the fucking Punisher. <laughs> Anyways, uh, okay, despite all that crap, uh, and I don't like the school district like the administration, because as I've talked about before, they're the idiots who fired me for being on an R-rated TV show ten, seven years before I was teaching, you know. Um, but the teachers here have been, like, I have pretty much no complaints about any of the teachers my daughter's encountered, and she just finished fifth grade. And her fifth grade teacher was the best one yet. Susie. Very cool lady, you know? So, like, uh, that's great. So I don't mind her being there. It's just, you know, obviously the concern now. I mean, they have to do, they do drills, you know? It's fucking, that's insanity. Um... So yeah, but uh, no, I couldn't homeschool my daughter. Yeah. Anyways, what else can we talk about? I think we beat that horse dead quickly. Plus, I'm no, that's the other thing is I don't. I mean, yeah, I have opinions and I can go do rants and I can bring up old stand-up jokes because this no, the situation never changes and I wrote those jokes 12 fucking years ago. But uh, you know. Um, the thing is, is I think we're all sick of talking about it too. Sometimes we just need a break. Sometimes we just need a break, right? And that's what I was trying to do here. But you know, of course, people are going to ask because they know I'm an opinionated, loudmouth, sassy ship ball, and so they're going to wonder what I'm thinking. Yeah, that's fun. How do I find Obi Wan? Um, well, I just turn on Disney Plus and then go to the magnifying glass and start typing Obi Wan I, and normally it shows up. Do, 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 do. Those big chunks are killing me of the beef? Well, first of all, you're not in my kitchen. Don't judge me. You have no idea what's happening next, so shut the fuck up. Secondly, I'm going to show you what happens next, so shut the fuck up. God, I hate it when people judge me cooking. I've had this cooking show in here for almost, like, I don't know, a year and a half, you know, and there's been gaps in production, but, you know, like, I know how to do it. Plus, I was cooking for... 39 and a half years before I started doing this it never died and always enjoyed myself, you know, so fucking don't worry about it. But I have, a, I have a tool. There's a way. There's a thing. Don't worry about it. Um, okay, so then I got the, the uh, onion. Eh, this is minced dish. It's fine. I don't mind kind of chunky, uh, sloppy joe anyways. What else do I need to do? I gotta mince the, a third of a green bell pepper, okay, and three cloves of garlic. And then we, uh, and, and. I'm gonna put a little more light on this for a moment. <laughs> oh, that looks even better, doesn't it? Excuse me, jeez. I'm gonna let that brown for a little bit longer, and then I will uh, put it in the colander, and then don't worry what happens to it next, okay? What's up with the asparagus? Did he already make it? No, he didn't. He will make it soon. And he reads the comments. <laughs> 400. I did forget to warm up the oven, which I normally do before the show, but whatever. Um. Okay, I'm going to get something to just put all the veggies on. The plate should be fine. <sighs> what would be the best meal for a Star Wars marathon? Well, I've never really made much in the way of themed Star Wars food, despite being a huge Star Wars fan. I know I'm wearing a Star Wars shirt right now. I'm going through a weight thing. You know, trying to lose weight for like a year and a half never fucking works. Just getting fatter and fatter. And this is, a uh, you know, one of my fat guy shirts. Because every fat... Like... You get to, when you're a nerdy guy like me, you get to, and you're gaining weight and getting fat, you uh, get to a point where the only clothes available are like Star Wars or Harry Potter. And fuck Harry Potter. So, uh, 
My daughter's in a room with her headphones on, so... Anyways, fuck Harry Potter and that turf bullshit. Right? So. Um, let's, uh... So, yeah, it's Fat Guy Star Wars shirts for days. You're not fat, you're big boned. No, I'm fat. Trust me, it's okay. What's funny, and I yell at someone uh, about this last time I did a video game stream... When someone's overweight, everybody assumes they're just on the brink of death at all times, which is just not true. Um, but I even thought that myself, sort of. Okay, so I was even more overweight when I was about to turn 33. So this would have been like almost midnight on my birthday in 2014. And I was about to go to bed, and I thought to myself, like, holy shit, fat, com fat comedians from sketch comedy shows die when they're 33. Because Belushi and Farley both died at, when they were 33. And I was like, oh, God. So I looked it up, and no, they didn't die from being fat. I mean, although I'm sure health problems from obesity could have contributed, those guys died from, like, mixing coke and heroin, right? John Candy died from being fat, basically, and he made it to, like, 44. So it's fine, you know? COVID put weight on everyone. Yeah, except uh, I don't know if anybody who's a big Star Wars fan also reads the books. And I love the High Republic stuff. And one of the authors of the High Republic stuff is Daniel Jose Older. Old, or Old Dare probably is how you say the last name. That guy, like, got ex... Like, he was already, like, this hot uh, buff... Oh, I forget what his nationality is. Uh, I don't know. Uh, somewhere uh, Hispanic or Latin. Anyways, uh... But he was already buff, and he got, like, even more buff. And there's a few people like that that got even more buff during COVID. It's like... Fuck you. <laughs> Suck my butt. <laughs> my grandma tried to convince me Chris Farley died from choking on a chicken wing. Isn't that how Mama Cass died? I'm going too slow, by the way, as usual. It's okay, though. Wait, Mama Cass died ham sandwich, right? Who's, who, who died choking on a chicken wing? Or am I just thinking of that scene in Beetlejuice where everybody's in the waiting room and there's a guy with a chicken wing in his throat? Other ingredients? Question mark? Yes, there are other ingredients. Thanks for asking. All right, this has got to be minced. Okay, this hamburger... Okay, it's getting too browned a little bit. It's okay. All right, so everybody, uh, not everybody, but one or two people were panicking about the chunks. Here's the deal, children. Let me, uh, all right, I'm going to put it in the colander first over, over in the sink. And here's another thing about Sloppy Joe's. A lot of times when you have it, like... Like I said, in the Midwest, we have sloppy joes all the time. They're a common occurrence. You can get them at Dairy Queens out here. You can get, uh, or at least some Dairy Queens, not all of them. You can also get them at uh, a Zesto, which is a Midwestern kind of version of Dairy Queen. Yeah. What are they asking, Wrongstar? I missed what they were asking. Okay, I do share the recipes every time. Every time I stream. Except for the first few shows. I steer the recipes every single time on my Facebook page, my Twitter page, and on my Instagram. Uh, Instagram is Timmy Williams is pretty. Twitter is Timmy is a nerd. And then it's my name on Facebook, Timmy Williams. Um, I always, always share the recipes. So. Anyway, so, uh, so sloppy joes are a common occurrence around here. When you get them, like, for instance, the ones I was talking about that my friend's husband bought just to continue fooling her into not knowing there was a, a surprise party uh those are greasy and when you get them at places they're greasy and this recipe tells you to kind of like cook it in the grease and i will a little bit but like i think i got 80 or 85 percent uh you know lean beef so it's not super fatty but i don't like the greasiness i, I want the just the flavor part you know Loose meat sandwiches. Okay, red ecker cane. Here's the other thing. Loose meat sandwiches uh, around here, especially southern South Dakota, uh, in the southeastern part of the state, kind of where Sioux Falls is, and heading towards Iowa and Nebraska in that area, there's something called tavern sandwiches. Now, tavern sandwiches are similar to loose meat sandwiches, and neither of those, those are not sloppy joes. Sloppy joes are tomato-based sauce, 
and loose meat is like a, well, there's onion in it too, but it's like a gravy kind of thing. I don't know if Sidecar's out here. Sidecar knows all about this shit, because he travels around on a motorcycle with a sidecar, and uh, like uh, he knows about it. If you're in Iowa, there is a chain of uh, a Sloppy Joe place, or a loose meat sandwich place, I mean, uh, Made Right, M-A-I-D. So there you go. Hey, if I call myself fat, or if my three best friends and the one that's now dead, the fourth one, uh, call me fat, well, we can. They know me really well, and I know myself really well. You can't. That's why I just banned that guy. So, you know, there's differences. It's a fucking bit of a hierarchy. And if you're going to make fun of me, you got to at least bring your A game and be funny. Don't just say, you're huge. Fuck it. You're banned. You know. Fucking, you know. I rule with an iron fist. Slice of American on a Sloppy Joe? Okay, so I've never been into the idea of cheese on a Sloppy Joe. Never liked it. But here's the thing. So Zesto and Dairy Queen, I believe, back when they both served Sloppy Joes, would put a slice or two slices or maybe three of pickle on there. And uh, that's fucking delicious. So I will be doing that. You know? I know, the cheese thing, I can't, I don't get it, man. The only time cheese and tomato works for me is a... Uh, that salad with the fancy Italian name, or pizza, you know? I don't know. You lost 30 pounds since December. I was on the verge of liver disease. Yikes, yeah. So, you know, and I got really, 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 I lost a whole bunch of weight in 2018. I lost 60 or 70, 80 pounds? How many? I lost a goddamn lot of weight. <laughs> 80 pounds-ish. Maybe 85. I can't remember. It was a lot. Do the math. What's 265 to 175? Is that 90? Fuck. I guess I lost a whole bunch of weight. Anyways, and I did it by using just a calorie counter and moving around more. Because I don't believe in fad diets. I don't believe in fucking doing a bunch of weird shit. I had a stand-up joke about that, too. You know, like for paleo and stuff. It's like, all you have to do to add 10 years to your life is be miserable for 70 of them. Because you're not eating cheese. You know, fuck that. But, um, you know, so, and I was doing super great and maintaining the weight for the most part until, you know, COVID and then Trevor died and then other stresses and then blah, 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 and constant, you know, so it's, it, and, and how I express my emotions is by fucking food. So, you know, it's been very, very difficult. And for me, it's a night eating thing. So if I can, you know, not eat at night, like past about eight, then fine. But if I have even, like, one cracker after that, then my brain just goes like, fuck it, I party! And, like, ugh, it's terrible, dude. Did it last night? It sucks. Probably why my cheeks are so red right now, you know? So. Alrighty, so I think you got all my vegetables ready. He went on. An onion and bell pepper. Oh, I was supposed to add garlic later. Oh, that's fine. Okay. Alright, cool. So, we're gonna be cooking this now. Um... Just put it all in there. Oh, yeah. Cook all that stuff together for a few minutes. I might lower the heat a little bit. The garlic went in sooner than it's supposed to. Not a big deal, but, you know. Um... That's most of the vegetable prep done. Vegetable prep is always more slow when I do this show, so that's most of it done for the whole night already. Um, except asparagus, which is much easier. Um, oh, God, why did I tip over? Okay, um, okay so let's take a, I don't have a... I wish I had a sink cam, but here's the deal. So people were asking about the beef crumbles. Sure, you know, it's a good question. And was I being a sassy bitch about it? Yeah, but it's me. Um, so here's what I do. I have this thing. Look at this guy. It looks like a brand, but it's a plastic thing. I bought it at a kitchen store. And I just kind of do this, stir it around a little bit too. There's a little too, you know, I need a bigger, if I had a bigger colander, I'd stir a lot harder. Okay, but um, basically you can break it up really well with that. And actually, 
when I pour the beef back in the pan here, I will be stirring the whole thing with that for a little bit, and that really works too, you know? So. A plastic chicken's foot, basically. You have that too, Tommy Salami? Yeah, it's great, right? And I could have just been stirring it the whole time with this, but I kind of feel like it works better after it's browned. I don't know. Anyways, as, as you can see, it's breaking it up pretty good. My colander's too fucking small. I need a big metal one, like a real cook. Um, okay. Alright. Mmm. Now it's time to open the can of tomato paste and put it in stuff. I don't know. I don't even. I haven't. I'm, like, I'm not a big Top Gun guy, but that song stuck in my head. So we're talking about Star Wars, we're talking about Obi-Wan, we're talking about fat guys who wear Star Wars shirts, aka me. And um So this is one tablespoon of tomato paste. Um I'll tell you what Star Wars thing I'm very excited about. I got it a while ago and it came out and didn't get to it until this weekend really. Is the new Lego Star Wars Skywalker saga kicks fucking ass. And at first I didn't like it. Because my daughter and I were playing it two-player, and if anybody, if you ever play the LEGO games, you know their camera work and their two-player stuff is hectic, and it's like they try a different method every three games, and it's like they never have figured it out. I don't know why. It's just stressful. The camera doesn't go where you want. It's hard to tell what's happening. You know. But um, what we've determined is you play it by yourself to, like, learn how it works, and then... Then you're good to uh, play with your friends, you know, and because uh, we do local co-op, you know, my daughter's here, so um, that's the deal. Um, but it's great. So it's you know, if you played the other Lego Star Wars games, yes, there's similarity in some of the levels, but they it's new, new everything. They don't just throw in the old games. They made everything again, and it's open world. There's huge open world exploration and lots of like bonus things to find, which I always love in games and stuff like that. It's just a blast, you know? Um, and, you know, I got Elden Ring. Everybody's been like, you gotta want to watch Timmy play Elden Ring because he gets so pissed about everything. And, yeah, Elden Ring will be perfect to see that happen. And I'll get to it. But I've just been having so much fun with Wonderlands and with Lego and just with stuff like that lately that I haven't gotten really hardly into Elden Ring at all. So... Okay, I fucked up here. Now it's not... Okay. Nah. I don't think I broke up the beef enough before I put in this stupid... Before I put in the tomato paste. It's okay. I'll figure it out. It almost feels like there's not enough tomato paste. but Everything else is the right amount, so I don't know. Tiny Tina's Wonderland is so much fun, and... I like the ending a lot. Um, there doesn't seem to be a ton going on post game, so I kind of see what happens there. But, but the Star Wars thing is is good. What camera are you using for the cook cam? I want to do a Twitch foraging cooking show, but don't know how to set it up. Ask Sam's brother. A while back, Sam's brother and Sam and the other whitest kids uh, and a bunch of beautiful human beings who are fans and donors and stuff uh, bought me stuff to make a new computer, including this second cam. And it's, uh, I mean, they all know this, and so it's not me slagging on them. It's a cheap camera. I don't even know what brand it is. I don't even have software for it, so I can't alter it in any kind. And anyway, and it's got this weird kind of... I think it's been called before, like, prison camera style to it. But I have a lot of light on my subject here right now. I've got two lights, a very bright magnetic light, and then the actual just stove hood light 
shining on this thing right now. So, you know, um, it's making it look pretty good, I think. But anyways. Okay, what do I do next? Add ketchup, water, brown sugar. Okay, let's get let's get into some big shit. Ketchup. If it's a Midwestern recipe without ketchup, watch out, it might be ethnic. <laughs> Welcome to the Midwest where some salt is too spicy. Not for me, don't worry. At the retirement party I was talking about earlier, they had this Cajun pasta, and I was just eating gobs of it. I loved it. And everyone was like, it's so hot. I'm like, not if you've ever been to other states. Ketchup water, brown sugar, mustard, chili butter. Okay. Uh, how much water? A third cup of water. I'm not peeing. I'm not peeing. I'm not peeing. Okay, um, and I got things turned down pretty low, so I'm not burning it, don't worry. Um, just a tablespoon brown sugar, or less if you prefer. <laughs> no. I'm not some sort of coward. Do you have the store Gabe's, formerly Gabriel Brothers in South Dakota? No, never heard of that, actually. And I've been around too, but I don't know that one. Where's my uh there we go. Yeah, my open bag of brown sugar is not the it's kinda of drying up. I'm a little bit worried about it. Oops, all oh, ketchup. God, I love brown sugar clumps. Who doesn't, right? We love it folks, don't we folks? We love it and we love to see it. Teaspoon go. Mm, 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 mm. Teaspoon of yellow mustard. I should just get the rest of the things over here. That'd be an act of economy of movement, wouldn't it? Okay, we got a teaspoon of yellow mustard. I like this straight edge spatula, right? Love it. I use it for everything. This is actually, it's a small one. You might be being like, why is this so small? Somebody gave my daughter a bunch of like kids cooking equipment years ago, but it like, I love this. It's just that the handle is very small because it's meant for like a four year old hand, you know? But I love it. Get all that good onion shit in there. Hey, I like to use lots of different implements and do dishes for nine hours afterwards, right? Who doesn't? Okay. Still more stirring to do, obviously. Uh, it's not all combined yet, but we got more stuff to put in there. Three quarter teaspoon of chili powder. Brown sugar, ketchup water, brown sugar, mustard, chili powder. Worcestershire sauce. Three quarters of a teaspoon of this, baby. Chili powder. I'd just put a teaspoon in if it was just me, but my daughter, her uh, palate is still younger, and she's not quite into spicy stuff as much as she should be. Okay. Uh, half a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. Oh, we also need a half a teaspoon of kosher salt, so we're going to get that first since that's dry. And, uh... Otherwise, then you gotta spend time wiping out the teaspoon, half teaspoon. Other, right? but you know, do it this way. Then you can just use the same thing twice. You know? Oh, it's starting to smell good. Now I refrigerate my Worcestershire sauce because did you know this ship that got anchovies in it? Or is it sardines? It's anchovies. Yeah. All right. Um, half teaspoon, quarter teaspoon red pepper flakes. 
Okay. And a quarter teaspoon of pepper. And a dash of hot sauce. And we just kind of let it do its thing after that. Wait, where did I put my flanks? It's over here. Mm. I don't know. Is that a dash? <laughs> I would just pour that shit in if it was just me. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Man, this shit already looks good. I think I'm going to stir it now with the thing and break up the beef a little bit more. It's good. It's looking good to me. This does not make very much, by the way. This is only a pound of ground beef in here. And so, I don't know. I don't know what's it say for servings. Probably only four. Six. Yeah, that sounds about right. Okay. Which, you know, if... if heaven forbid, they, whenever there's a recipe that gets used on... Hold on. Let me rant about something real quick. Whenever there's a recipe for something that you're going to eat with hamburger buns, or you, uh... You know, they all, it's always an inordinate amount of servings. It's always like, you know, six or four or ten when, you know, hamburger buns and hot dog buns. Wait, hamburger buns come in eight, you know, so. Yeah, this looks good now, right? I'm not going to eat it yet because we've got to make the other thing. Um, so I'm going to be putting it in the Instant Pot. Once it simmers here for a while, I'm going to put it in the Instant Pot and let it uh, do its thing for a while while I get the asparagus ready. I did miss it that time. I know. I've, I fucked up on censoring myself. Okay. Well, GM Furious George, you could always, like, look it up on the Internet. If you type my name and that thing, you'll find out real fucking quick. And no, it's not porn. Although sometimes that'd be better. Okay, so uh, that's good. Cook over medium heat for 10 to 15 minutes until the mixture has thickened to your liking. Thicken to your liking. Would you like me to thicken to your liking? I'm going to thicken to your liking. All right. All right, it says here, remove over from heat and serve over toasted buns. What am I, a fucking countess? A duke? Huh? Uh, what am I, a fucking earl? God damn! Toast the buns? <laughs> Good lord. <laughs> Hello, yes, sir. I would like your finest uh, sloppy chair sandwich, but it's a toasted bun. Okay. You get the point. Toast that keeps the, bug, the buns for them getting soggy. Yeah, but, you know, I get mine nice and thick. It doesn't matter. You know? Plus, if I toasted the buns... If I was going to toast the buns, then I couldn't have done that great fucking bit I just did. Okay, where's my thing? There it is. Oh, yeah. Get in there, you fucking... <sighs> Also, I want to point something out. When people were worrying about the big chunks of beef when I was browning it, someone said, like, he, he's going to die for the big chunks of beef. It's beef! You can eat, pink, like, the pink and raw stuff, you know? Uh, hello? If it was chicken, yes, you'd have a point, but it's easier to break that stuff up anyways. Thick buns. Thick, thick buns. Um... So yeah, I bought the Star Wars game. What else is going on? Um, I found a reason lately to get more into classical music. Oh, I've cut asparagus on here before. I do it this way. I feel like it wastes a lot. Maybe I should just cut the stems off, right? I took what a little too seriously. Giving you another time out? 
It's mythic, I won't, but come on, like, I like to just bitch about people and the stuff they do, you know? Whatever, you know, I don't want those big ends on the asparagus, I just don't, you know? Alright, so, we're going to just put them here. You want to eat raw Walmart hamburger? No, I'm not talking about eating raw hamburger. Uh, but yeah, what about those dudes that make, like, tiger meat? That's crazy, right? That's, like, just raw hamburger with, like, an egg and stuff mixed in. <laughs> now I want a sloppy hoe, Joe. Isn't that a great... That was a great typo. You should give yourself Freudian slip, hell yeah. <laughs> you like to cut them? I do the breaking thing, but, I mean, I don't know. I feel like... This has always worked out for me in getting nice, tender asparagus. Adventures of Interest, I feel like I have seen that happen before. GM Fury Charge. Okay, see, that's that's what I that's why I do it. It's the whole woody end thing. Yeah. So okay, so I'm not nuts. But I understand why when people see that, they get a little shocked, you know? Because it's like, especially in this day and age, you're like, everything's so fucking expensive. And especially produce, because the government wants you to slather your fucking innards with high fructose corn syrup. And doesn't want you eating these green things, you know, you might live longer. Um, get enough uh, vigor going through your veins to go, uh, you know, finally put them to the blade. But anyways, um, so I understand when people watch me do something like this, like, you're wasting so much. It's like, yeah, but it's good. And if it was all stringy and shitty, I wouldn't eat any of it, so I'm wasting even more, you know? A friend of mine uh, from here, I've known him for many, many years, for the last, like, 10 years or so, he's had a lot of weird digestive issues, and he finally figured out what it is, and it's he can't have any high fructose corn syrup, and it's like, good fucking luck, you know? Like, holy shit. How, what are you going to eat? You know? Okay, so I've prepared the asparagus, because high fructose corn syrup is in everything, and here in the Midwest with farmland, uh, you know, 90% of it is, you know, subsidized grains, especially corn, and that's... You know, being turned into, you know, fucking Coca-Cola half the time. But, you know, great. Bobby Benedict, yeah. Bobby's from here. Or, uh, lived here. I can't remember if he's from here or not. Anyways, yes, there's literally, literally, quite literally a corn palace. All right, so my asparagus recipe, it's not even much of a recipe. But the, uh, it, the instructions come from Rachel Ray. So, there you go. It is farmland, it's just that it's like, you know, it's not that it's not farmland, but it's not like, and I hate it when people end their sentences like that with LOL, like you're fucking being condescending. Just stow it. Anyways, but you can ask questions. So it's not that it's not farmland, you're right. It's that it's uh, like, you know, 50, 70 years ago, they bought a bunch of uh, land that was being used to grow food for the local area and used it to... Uh, you know, grow all these gigantic subsidized crops of corn that then get shipped the fuck out of here. Or, you know, potatoes, like, did you know we import and export the same amount of potatoes? <laughs> That's weird, you know. It's just a bunch of horse shit because of corrupt deals with trucking companies and fuel companies and blah, 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 you know? Yeah. Okay, uh, lightly coat asparagus spears in extra virgin olive oil. Season the asparagus with black pepper. Take a quick count of the spear tips. Tiny wieners gonna get cooked. If I sang this by school, I'd be in jail getting booked. Justifiably, cause that would be creepy. Anyways. Yo, you guys wanna talk about music? I started talking about music. Hold on, I gotta count these little wieners. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Wait, let's look at this down. You guys have looked at my beef long enough. Look at my wiener, my tips. Stop looking at my meat and start looking at my tips. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 
Oh god, start over. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25! Oh, it almost splits by 4! That's what Rachel Ray wants! Yeah, I know there's actual farmland out in your neck of the woods, chilly, chilly necko. Uh, you mean Washington State, right? Because I lived out that way. We go to like Savvy Island where there's real farms where people are growing vegetables for people who live around there to come get and eat. You know? It's great. Okay, so the problem with this asparagus is it looks too goddamn healthy. So, let's solve that problem. hy V shop hy V for dead pig pieces, corn fed with stuff. Oh, Rainier cherries. God damn, I love Rainier cherries. All right, so, so I don't. I haven't watched uh, cooking shows in a long time. I remember Rachel. Rachel Ray kind of sounds like this, right? Or is that wrong? Anyways, I feel like she's like, you gotta use a slice of bacon to wrap the bundles and secure the spears together. Oh, also, we're salting it. I'm gonna do a little pepper. Swirl the bacon over the asparagus stalk. I don't know what exactly you mean, but uh, maybe I'm doing what you think, what you're trying to say. And this is center cut, so it's shorter bacon, so we might have to use more. <laughs> oh no! All right, so we would do six pieces each, and one's going to have seven. I'm actually going to give this one seven because it's got a shorty, so we'll do another smaller one in there. Okay. Now, I don't go too hard on having to attach it too much because the bacon doesn't... It's okay around it, but basically what you, what you do it for is because it makes the asparagus nice and tender and kind of imbues it with some of its smokiness, you know? Wrap the asparagus around the bacon. That sounds very difficult. Yeah, so we have a farmer's market here in my town, and there is local people growing local stuff. I like to complain, and it's not always accurate, you know. Um, uh, but there, you know, it's not a ton. It's funny, like, the best... Okay, here, here's what's crazy about modern day trying to get groceries to just feed yourself or your family, right? It's like, yes, there are... Okay, so I'm bitching that, like, oh, they bought up all the local farmland. They subsidized people to grow gigantic fields of corn and soybean or whatever. Okay. Okay, so yes, there are still, and it's true, but I make it sound like there's nowhere to get local vegetables at all, right? There is. You could go to the farmer's market that's open May through October for, uh, you know, five hours every Friday and like four or five hours every Saturday. That's it. So yeah, you can still get local produce here, you know. You just got to plan it out because it's only before it's not available for the rest of the year, you know. So that's, that's a little fucked up, right? What is happening here? I'm having some major issues. There we go. Kiss the ground. Okay, I read a book by Barbara Kingsolver years ago called Animal Vegetable Miracle about uh, her and her family. She was like a, a novelist. She's just like a regular old writer. And her and her family tried to live on their farm in North Carolina or Virginia, somewhere out that way. Um, for uh, They bought a farm. And they try to go for a whole year only buying stuff that they grew themselves or was available, like, within 10 miles or something. And um, they each allowed themselves one, like, not locally available thing. And I think her husband chose salt. Smart motherfucker. She chose coffee. Maybe smarter? I don't know. Those are both two important things that you can't get around here, you know? All right. Get this guy some produce, someone says. Yeah, but look what I just did to the produce I do have. Wrapped it in a dead animal. Washing my hands after touching all that raw stuff. All right, I got to get that sloppy joe off the heat, too, don't I? I don't want it to fucking burn it. 
Okay. So, yeah, let's throw the asparagus in, and then I will see to the sloppy joe. Foraging and fishing only this summer, at least for a week, and see how possible it is. Chili Neko 666. Where are you? Stardew Valley is awesome, by the way. You know what? I want to talk about that. Uh, I, I, I have something similar uh, related to kind of what you just said. Okay, so these are on a slotted broiler pan, because obviously the fat from the bacon, you want to, like, get away from it. So, the, the grease, I mean. So we're going to put them in here. Oh, yeah. Cook, my pretties. Oh, what do we do? Like, 12 minutes? All right. Wait. Why I use the oven timer when I got this cute little motherfucker right here? Twelve minutes. Get after it, piggy. I don't think I put enough olive oil, salt, or pepper on that, but uh, whatever. It'll be fine. Bacon, get the bacon figured out here. This is, uh, this bacon, yeah, it's not cooked, it's cured. Oh, what kind of bacon is this? I mean, cured. Just cured. Here's the thing. Uh, one of the reasons, okay, I, I wanted to do, you might notice the Whitest Kids streaming schedules uh, got all goofy. So Sam couldn't do his Wednesday show, so he wanted to do it Thursday. I was trying to do Zucchini Boys, but my life has outside of this has been nuts lately, so I didn't really have it together yet. So he's like, oh, perfect. And he's like, he's like, well, why don't you do it another night? I'm like, okay. And then he and Nate decided to do Trailer Boys on Monday tomorrow for Memorial Day. So I'm like, perfect. And, you know, I have my daughter all the time right now, and so I need to feed her, too. And instead of trying to do Zucchini Boys, like, it, it's, because what would happen is I would cook for her, and then do Zucchini Boys, and then cook twice, you know, but no. Sunday afternoon, you know, change up the style a little bit. And, um, just get to kind of hang out. Um, and, and then have her food... You know, then her food's just like ready. And I'm just gonna have it on keep warm for the next, I don't know, while. And it's fine. And when she gets hungry, I'll have her come out here and try some, you know? But I gotta at least try this, right? Mm hmm. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. So yeah, ooh, that, that does have some spice to it. Which it might be too hot for her, we'll find out. Yeah, who wants to chug uh, sparkling water? What's that big black thing on the right of the stream? This? That's a microphone. This is a mouse. Oh, and I, I just realized now that the, uh, that doesn't work, by the way, if you've ever tried to do that. I just realized I was covering up my thing. Okay. If it's too hot, maybe you can add some cheese to help. My brother's wife, whenever I would, like, talk about, uh, every once in a while, before I started doing Zucchini Boys... Because I do like to cook. I've always liked to cook. Um, I would, I would like sometimes go on like Twitter or Facebook and say, "What do you like to do with this vegetable or that vegetable?" The really clever geniuses would always say, "Put it in the trash." It's like we get it. You're afraid to enjoy yourself or open your mind. 
Um, my brother's wife would always say, put cheese on it. <laughs> and a lot of vegetables, it doesn't quite work. And But there was one where I made it, and I shared the recipe, and she was like, you put cheese on it! I can't remember what it was. Yeah, maybe it had zucchini or something. I forget what vegetable I put cheese on it. But... Yeah, it's crazy to me there's still people that don't eat their vegetables, you know? Uh, even though I'm fat, I eat too much liquor, so I eat too many tortilla chips, I eat too many this, this, that, and the other thing. Okay, sure, fine, whatever. But like I was saying earlier, some people like to assume that if you're fat, you're like on the death's door all the time. Like, when I was streaming video games a few weeks ago, someone was like, you must have really bad blood pressure. No, I have great blood pressure, and I just got it checked again on Monday or Tuesday, and... The lady, I forget the numbers exactly, but she's like, this is what, your blood pressure is what it says in the textbook, like, what it should be. Like, literally. She's like, this is literally, you have textbook perfect blood pressure. I was like, fuck yeah, I don't know why. But so, <laughs> it's because I still do things and I eat vegetables and I still move around. I just eat too much, you know, sometimes. So it's fine. Um, but uh, anyways, what I'm trying to say is I can't believe people don't eat their vegetables. Eat your fucking vegetables. Is it Thursday? I just saw that notification. No, I even saw an old notification. Just came back from a beer run and Timmy's dancing. That sounds about right. <laughs> Excuse me. Woofed up. So, I kind of don't know what to do right now. I got the <laughs> asparagus in here. I have sloppy joe in there. Uh, I'm going to use uh, ballpark hamburgers. Um... I'll be right back. I'm still here. I'm still here. I'm still here. I'm still here. You want to put on the thing and have like uh, just bring me, bring me ingredients or something? Or you want to wait till I have the sandwich ready? Yeah. It's right there. So later we're going to make cookies, so my daughter's going to come on the stream and help me bring, uh, help bring some of the ingredients out here. Let me get the, alright, cool. Loose cord. Okay, um, so grab the peanut butter, please, and then the bags of, uh, the, 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 no, 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 the chips and these ones. Grab the peanut butter and those, and the other peanut butter. Okay. There you go. All right. Come on. Come back here. There we go. There, finally. People have been wanting to see your face forever, and now they finally can. By the way, the, the, the fan that sent me this mask many years ago is still, she's in here right now, so. All right, cool. <laughs> We're going to make monster cookies later. Uh, not on stream. I actually made monster cookies on stream. We just, you know, like I said, she's around all the time. I don't want to put her on the stream because you guys are all fucking weirdos. And, uh, but, you know, uh, she, it's fun. You know, we have fun. Okay, i got to put away the vegetables. Vegetables. Now, I'm just going to throw the onion and green pepper together because I'm sure whatever I do with them, I'll just use them both. Bobby says, guys, I think Timmy's daughter stole the Declaration of Independence. She loves that movie. And I told her once that years ago, I don't know if it was really a, an official pitch of a sketch, but it was just some goofy thing Trevor kept doing where he wanted to, like, be, like, we, he wanted to do, like, a National Treasure-style sketch. Because in that, uh, in those movies, you know, Nick Cage will be like, they'll find some clue and he'll be like, okay, okay, so there's this and there's that uh, former brown, former brown, brown spots, uh, cow, there's a cow, oh, oh, and then like suddenly have the idea, right? So Trevor wanted to like do that where he's just like as a Nick Cage type, and he's walking around, and then he goes, wait, look, look, there's a map on the back of a bald eagle. <laughs> and he just loved that idea. I don't think it was ever more than just that little bit of an idea, but it's funny, you know? 
You don't have another kid that looks just like, like John Travolta? I should get one, just for that reason. You're right. I should produce another child just to give them a John Travolta face and then make them both dress up in suits and shoot at each other. We should be able to name Sam's kid for donos, yeah. <laughs> That's how you get Chet Hanks? Whoa. There's a poll? Oh, I haven't been looking at the stream. Actually, I should check on... I don't know if there's any donos or sub activity, but let's take a look here. I was maybe going to play a game tonight, but eh, I think I'll just hang out. Hey, Spoon Tree's here. Hello, mate. How you doing? All right, let me grab my keyboard. I guess I could maybe play something. I don't know. We're getting close. Ooh, I can smell that asparagus. What do we got, Piggy? Oh, just a few minutes. All right, cool. Um, oh, one other thing I want to talk about. Has anyone else been watching the new Kids in the Hall? Because I think it's great. What the fuck just happened? There we go. What was I going to look up? Oh, yeah. Jeez, it's fucking ADD summer. Welcome back to hot ADD boy summer. I was having my uh, therapist do like a reevaluation. Obviously, I still have anxiety, but like there's other things, you know, mental illness. Uh, a lot of this stuff is kind of on its own spectrum, sort of, and uh, maybe even related to the other spectrum. But you know, uh, yeah, I feel like anxiety, depression, uh, ADHD, and a lot of that stuff kind of uh, can can come together. And you know, um, so I was asking to get reevaluated a little bit, and I was like, well, maybe I don't need. <laughs> maybe uh, you know, it's not like a Maybe we shouldn't be treating my stuff uh, from an ADHD angle anymore. And then just like everything I do, I'm just like, no, I absolutely, absolutely, that is the deal. You know, so whatever. Okay, um, just trying to see if there's any donuts or anything. I don't want to miss stuff. Nuke is in the Hall is surprisingly really good. Yes, Chili Neko, exactly. Like, um, I've only watched the first few episodes. I'll probably watch some more tonight, but, uh... Um... It's really good. Like they, they, they. First of all, uh, they're on Amazon and they really went balls out. Literally, that's not. I mean, that is a joke. But I also was saying it. I'm like, well, I could say that because they really did it. Um, you know. But also, just like, it's creative and there is fan service in it. They bring back a ton of the, uh, you know, popular recurring characters. But none of it feels fucking fan servicey. None of it feels like a cash in. None of it feels like the exploitative. It's like funny, and it's like they're trying something, and you know they're clearly using their now evolved, older, more mature points of view to, uh, you know, because a lot of it's about them being older, and some of the jokes are about their old, they have old bodies, you know. It's like it's very cool. Is that woodpecker back? No, that's a sparrow. Okay. Um. Anyways, uh, it's great. You know, the brand new key sketch is great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the first sketch of the first episode, right, was Hanging Dong, right? It's crazy. I'll tell you, that song's been stuck in my head since Boogie Nights. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, somebody says special liceps. All right. Let's see how the asparagus guy turned out, huh? And I clean. Oh, I don't have this camera on right now. I cleaned my stove, sort of. It's a little sketchy, but it's fine. All right. Oh yeah. They definitely sound right. There's some ASMR for you. Oh my god, those are goddamn beautiful. Alright, let's do the tender test. They're probably not done yet because these are some thick boys. WKUK reboot would be awesome. I mean, we're doing, you know, we've been doing stuff together as far as a new sketch show, especially with Trevor being gone. Don't hold your breath. But I'll tell you what, I mean... Watching... These guys who have influenced us, and we have befriended several of them and spent time with several of them. In fact, uh, you know, Kevin McDonald even has a bit in Trevor's memorial show, but 
watching them get to do that and knowing that we can't was real fucking sad and even made me a little bit jealous, you know? But um, it's great that they're able to do it and that it's fucking good, you know? So it's awesome, you know? Hope they get to do more, you know? And uh, also, I joked about this a while back on my Letterbox account, but so I like I haven't even seen... I've not seen every Kids on the Hall TV episode or sketch, but I've seen Brain Candy, their movie Brain Candy, like 47 gajillion fucking times. And... I uh, I love it. And it's hard to find. I bought on DVD. I lost the DVD, you know, on some breakup or something years ago. I don't even know. I don't even know where it went. Uh, I just Maybe I left it at a friend's house. I have no idea. But so for years, it's been so hard to find. Or it costs a lot. And now that they're on Amazon Prime with their new stuff and all their old shows are there, the movie is not. But I got the Blu-ray off Amazon like a week or two ago for like 10 bucks. You know, so now it's... So, yeah... Uh, you yeah, know, this uh, corporate dystopia hell we live in has a lot of uh, minuses, but there's a plus. Corporate, sur- corporate synergy, great, you know. It's like, hey, uh, uh, the pills I need cost $800,000 a month, and uh, my kids have to wear Kevlar to school, and um, everything's on fire all the time, and we can't go outside, but X, the X-Men and, and Chris Evans' Captain America got to meet. You know. <laughs> Basically, that didn't happen. I know someone will be like, that didn't happen. I know that didn't happen, but I'm saying that's the kind of place we're living in. That's why I'm saying, like, oh, yeah, that's great. I got the Blu-ray. We do have good spicy chicken sandwiches. You guys can still do it. No, we can't. Anyways, um, but I appreciate you. And, you know, we'll probably, you know, once the movie's out, I don't know. Something else will happen eventually, probably, because we just are too in love with ourselves. We're too convinced of our own greatness not to do something. Uh, you know, so we'll see. But, uh, you know, it, it would not be a similar form. It would be something different. Oh, I think you should leave is real fucking good. Yeah. The White House Kids car commercial. God. Yeah, I think you should leave. I, I haven't seen season two. I'm really bad at watching TV shows. I love watching movies. But uh, TV shows, I just can't do. I don't know. It's just not uh, a thing that my mind lets me accomplish. I don't know. But yeah, I, the first season is so great. The bones are their money. That's such a great sketch. And, then the, and I'm going to kick myself in the dick for saying this, but the hot dog guy sketch is great. So do you think he gets a bunch of hot dog references all day long, too? Probably not. He probably gets... Tim Robinson probably gets people like being like, the bones are their money on the street, right? Are you a fan of THC gummies or no? Um, you know, when Trevor had passed, I was eating a lot of gummies and stuff like that. And it's not legal here, so I was getting like Delta 8 and stuff that was... But I don't know. I feel like in some ways it did not help and made things worse for me in a way. So I have uh, not done anything like that lately. And I even was taking a higher dose of one of my anti-anxiety pills after he died and stuff. And I started in like December, January feeling really worse all the time. And I backed off of that and got way better. And I think um, there's, you know, again, like I was talking about how possibly getting reevaluated, you know, it's like, it changes up here, you know, as you age and, and you know, diet, uh, sunlight, so many different things affect it. And, um, you know, so I think I got to a point where I'm like, well, I don't need it right now as much, you know. Um, but, yeah, so we'll see what happens. But, anyways, uh, getting Vivance is a pain in the fucking ass. And so that's why I was hoping, like, oh, maybe I can, you know, it's not like I'll, my symptoms suddenly or the way I am suddenly changes. But, you know. There can be different ways when, when a, a professional evaluates you and says, like, oh, you know, maybe you're leaning more... Because uh, like, when I originally got diagnosed, it was you have ADHD and anxiety and, like, a side of depression o- and OCD. But, right, that was three and a half years ago. So what... No, two and a half years ago. So what if, you know, as you age and stuff, like I said, and things can change, um, maybe now it's uh, leaning harder this way or that. And so I was thinking, oh, let's get reevaluated. But also it's like, well, there's no way I don't have ADHD because I'm still just like... Huh! 
all the time, you know? So. Yeah, if I mean, too, fuck it. Oh. It's like every month, it's a fucking, you gotta jump through hoops, and you know, I've been lucky where the pharmacy I switched to, because I was with Walgreens, fuck that shit, fuck corporate pharmacies, man. Uh, well, the one I'm with now is a, is a chain, but they're in the same building where my uh, therapist is, and uh, they're great, they're super helpful, and they've helped me not have to pay too much, uh, if at all, for Vyvanse, uh, just by hopping me over through different subsidized programs and stuff, but, the, the, but that sucks, okay? That sucks that we have to do that. That sucks that I have to call, like, three different people every month, and fucking everybody has to panic just so I don't pay $400 for medicine that I need to function as an adult, you know what I mean? Fuck this country, right? So, like, ah, ah. my other medicines are cheap and fine, but it's like, ah, you know? But yeah, Walgreens, I, I go to therapy every week ish or every other week. Um, just kind of depends, but uh, roughly every two weeks. Uh, so, Walgreens, like, you know, I would, uh, so here, here's the other thing it's like Vyvanse is like a drug, right? It's like meth or whatever. And, <laughs> I was just thinking of alternatives to having to pay for it since I live in the Midwest. Anyways, um, that was a joke. Uh, CIA. Anyways, um, so, you know, uh, since it's a controlled substance, you can only request a refill like three or four days before the whatever, uh, you know, they, they see what date you got it, and you can't, and, and so you have to get it 30 days from there, and it has to be like, oh, you can't be less than like 26 or 7 days before, right? You have to wait a certain amount of time to request it again. So then I would do that, and then Walgreens would call it. I'd make it, and then like two days later, and I'm almost out, Walgreens would call and be like, yeah, we're still, uh, we ran out of it, so we're still, you know, doing it. Like, we're still waiting. I was like, oh my god, you know? Midnight Cowboy, yeah. Th stuff sucks. Exactly, Butter. It's, uh, everything's, uh, everything sucks, man. It's, I mean, Trevor's song was right. It's time for guillotines, and, you know, my little... Shtick I did, not shtick, but my little rant at the beginning of this episode, uh, or whatever you want to call it, was uh, about how we should start, you know, taking guillotines to the politicians for not even discussing, discussing, discussing the idea of even meeting to talk about health or uh, about, well, that too, but gun laws, you know, it's like, they won't even, like, try to even get it started, to even just get a conversation started, and it sounds like it actually sounds like maybe they are now, but I mean, even if they do, like, great. Even if something gets done now, great. But, like, fucking shame on you for having hundreds of children and other people, thousands, die over the last few years because you won't fucking talk about it. You know, fuck you guys. Anyways, um... Yes, Mr. Slipmans, I do. Well, at least this late stage trickle-down lie that we live in. And that's the other thing is, like... If you have parents or other adults in your life that you care about that are right wing and uh, a Republican or whatever, like the ones that I have family members that do, and not, they're all good people, they're all nice, they all, and some of them even like, you know, support the idea of legal weed or single payer health care or stuff like that. But they all just got tricked into this Republican whole dream. Because of the trickle down thing, and so they still think it works, and it's like it's fucking bullshit, you guys. It does not work, you know. It doesn't trickle down. It stays up there in the billionaire club, and the rich people and politicians have their own fucking socialism. They all have medicine and everything taken care of, so they don't give a fuck about us, you know. So let's stop doing it. The whole thing is a trick, right, Mythic? It's like when Bill Hicks would talk about like the economy's fake, anyways. You're like, ha 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 ha. Oh, he's right, you know. Is it asparaguses? I said asparagi. Maybe it's asparaguses. Uh, they lo they're looking good. Here, let me turn on the asparagus cam again. But, um... I, they're not quite tender enough. But they do look fucking great, don't they? Anyways. The 1% sloppy shows? They're not 1%, but the, mine are, like, not super fatty. I'd lick up the trickle so fast, right? Here's the thing is Bill Hicks and and George Carlin, too. And there's a few others, but those two mainly... One thing I hate, 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 hate 
is on Twitter or social media when someone be like, man, why these kids are still making your show now? You guys wouldn't get away with anything. That's just fucking stupid and a lie and stop watching Fox News. You know what I mean? Like, they're just mad that they can't be racist anymore. When people complain about, like, comedians can't do anything, it's like, well, just punch in the right direction, you stupid fucking asshole. Most of Whitey's kids would be fine. Do we take some missteps and probably be uh, rude towards people that didn't need us to be rude towards them? Sure. Everybody has. Everybody makes mistakes. But, like, most of our stuff is about the people in power. I mean, it's in our name. We're making fun of ourselves. It's not a compliment, you know? Um, and people would all be like, man, George, if George Carter was still alive, then people would be coming down on him. And he did, you know, do some, some stuff that wasn't, like, cool. But, like, his angle on it... And I guess I'm saying the same thing for us, too. It was like, okay, yeah, you're going to have material that doesn't age well all the time, no matter who you are, what you do. Okay, but... In our case, and, and he has a, a, there's an interview from CNN with Larry King from the early 90s where Carlin saying the same thing. It's like, he was always punching up, though, and so we're, you know, I feel like we generally did. That's what Hicks did, and so it works. Like, they're still, you know, they, they don't just, like, you know, make fun of trans people or women or black people or whatever just to, like, <laughs> isn't it funny? You know, they don't do that, you know, and I feel like we never did either occasionally by accident <laughs> just because we're being too stupid, you know, but... I agree, Midnight Cowboy Book. Right, uh, Sink Sipper Tyrannus, however you say that, sure. Uh, I wouldn't, see, Ed Edgy's another thing, and like, people will call us anti PC once, and someone wanted us to put that on a poster when we were very new, and it's like, I don't know, I mean, we're just, uh, we're just telling it like we see it, it being awesome, and, and just uh, trying to, like, be crazy and funny, and also, like, yeah. You know, Trevor always talked about how, like, yeah, we're the bad guys. We're, like, you know, white guys, like, straight white dudes. We're the bad guys, you know? We never had any uh, compunction against admitting that. And that's, like, the main thing that people have a problem with, uh, you know? And that's who you who has the problem with it, is that's who you most often hear having a problem with the way things are, are rich, powerful males, straight, normally white, and, uh, or just any straight white guy, really. You hear so many people be like, oh, God! They're just afraid that, like, the, about sharing a tiny piece of the pie. Not even sharing it, but just having other people come up to their level. They're so terrified of it. And um, so if every few years we have to pick another slur we don't say anymore, then fucking big deal, you know? That's not true. I wouldn't know. I, Mr. Slipman's white guys are the last bastion of who you can make fun of safely. Eh, I don't know. And, I mean, you know, you can't really quite be... You can't be racist towards white people. It's not like our race is just who we are. You know what I mean? You can make like an Italian joke or an Irish joke or something, but you know. Um, uh, but fuck us. You know, we, we have nothing to fucking complain about. You know, we've been in charge for too long, and we still are and still will be forever. <laughs> and uh, just because now it you know, we when uh, other marginalized people start uh, getting more of a foothold in society and are able to uh, burn the asparagus, uh, you know, just as much as I can and still have fans, that worries people. They're like, oh, no, 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 you know, it's like, dude, that is not, it's fine, you know, like, if you want me to stop using the hard R word, word or the hard F or whatever other slur, uh, because now you are more vocal, uh, you're able to be more vocal in society, fine, I can help you out. It was never important to me. You know what I mean? That can, like, find other things. So, here, here's, okay, here, here's a good example from my personal background of doing stand-up and stuff, right? So, people be like, you can't say anything anymore. No, you just gotta say the right shit to piss people off. Like, I live in the Midwest, right? I go to small town places and do comedy, and I'd make fun of churches and guns pisses people off great you're you gotta shake people. you gotta piss people off you know there's idiots out there who don't understand any words let alone jokes and they'll say stuff like comedy's not working if it's not pissing people off it's like no there people should be laughing if comedy's working but um you can still feel it piss people off with it you just gotta joke about the right things and again you joke about the shit that's in power the shit that's controlling us religion guns money taxes uh, you know, right-wingers, that kind of shit, you know? And left-wingers, too. I mean, Joe Biden is a fucking moron, you know? So that, that, he's not even left. He's center. None of those people are left. Hardly any of them. 
anyways, make fun of all that shit, you know? There's no reason to, like, go on stage and grouse about trans people. You know what I mean? I did trans material, too, but it was about how fucked up it is that we try and make them use certain bathrooms, you know? So you just gotta... So you can still joke about that stuff. You use the right angle. The right angle is normally, fuck these guys up here, you know? So talk about any of it, but, I mean, that's the direction you want to aim your ire, you know? Yeah, Chappelle's in the wrong. Fucking stop, stop making fun of them. You know, same with Ricky Gervais. Fucking, if you can't, if you're gonna take so long to write new material, and then you come out, and that's all you can ever fucking do is make fun of people who are already being kicked while they're down. Well, fucking go get, go back to, go back to your nice house. Let's go away. You know, that's how I see. We should eat the rich. But no. I mean, think about it. Someone just brought up Elon Musk. Would you really want to eat Elon Musk? I mean, he seems... I, I don't want to bite into Elon Musk. Warren Buffett might taste all right. You know? Who do you think tastes the best of the billionaires that we could eat? He's probably stringy. Russian oligarchs? I don't know, man. Maybe. I feel like like someone like Putin, like they're so like harsh and they spend they're so uh, full of hate and stuff that they probably don't taste good. I feel like you have to have some joy in order to cultivate um, the good grease and fat in your body to be to taste good, right? Which is why I believe in free range beef and chicken. Right? I think this is, I think these are good. I might do like another minute. Oh, and I'm probably gonna be done soon. I don't know. I obviously have to plate it and eat it. They're repossessing their yachts to sell. Is that really happening somewhere? I wanna buy, wanna buy a pissed off rich dude's boat. Yeah, you know, because they're all, that's the other thing is they're so, straight white dudes and rich people are, just obsessed with being victims. It's crazy, you know. Like they're just constantly, you know. The reason they're able to do things like, you know, this whole Roe versus Wade thing and all that is because they've spent. It's. I retweeted an Adam Conover video he put up the other day, and I retweeted it like yesterday or the day before, and he was talking more about the gun control thing, but it applies to lots of stuff where. They, the, this whole right wing takeover has been a long time coming and they've been working on it for a long time. Part of it is they've been putting this idea out there forever, uh, that, and it worked, that, you know, that there's always this, no one's letting us be us and no one's letting us and we're victims of this, this, that, and the other thing. And, uh, you know, oh, 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 the liberals are coming to do this and that, and the commies and the gay people are coming to do this and that, trans people are coming to take your kids away. All that shit, right? Now, the whole time they're saying this stuff, they're in charge they're making the decisions they're getting their stuff done and and part of the reason they can get their stuff done is because they're constantly convincing everyone that we should feel bad for them and we shouldn't we should eat them and right i should just stop right there just share memes yeah that'll do it Are there any chubby oligarchs? Wait, isn't Kim Jong-un? Isn't he kind of chubby or did he lose weight? Anyways, I really didn't want to turn this into a ranty thing. I'm just trying to have fun on a Sunday afternoon. I started off very uh, upset because of uh, uh, some, you know, me being dumb about, uh, uh, because I didn't... Uh, update the stream info and so people are immediately latching on to that which I hate that they do that but also I could have remembered but you know it's hard to remember everything anyways no it is fun I'm having a great time I just meant I didn't want to like do to get to you know 
<clears throat> soapboxy, you know. And I'm not <laughs> that at all. There's another kind of, uh, and again, it's the whole victim thing. Uh, people will be like, uh, stick to, like if you say stuff like this, especially on Twitter or social media or something, stick to comedy. It's like, dude, uh, everybody should be talking about this shit all the time, you yeah? know? Yes, the pedal thing is another satanic panic. That's a great, that's a that's a great comparison. You know, it's a, it's the D and D shit. It's the video game shit. It's all that stuff, over and over again. Eat the rich zucchini boys. God, someday, right? Like, good evening, everybody. Welcome to zucchini boys. Tonight we're making fillet of gates. All right, I'm gonna eat this asparagus. I think it looks good. Plate cam. Plate, plate, cam, plate, cam, plate, plate, cam, plate, cam, plate, plate, cam. Where did I put that thing that I need? Seriously, where did that go? What? Where did I? Yeah. I'm still here. I'm still here. I'm still here. I'm still here. Where's the thing? Also, see, this is what I'm talking about. Obviously, I still need the the bills. Um, okay. Thank you to everybody who resubscribed today. Uh, Tuck Isla Lizard, Drip Dingus, Glorious Dawn 92, Chili Neko 666, IMFAO, CBD's Nuts, Not My Bussy, Meadows Hands, Team J Adams, ZTINR, Gratuitas, Nook Among Us, El Muchos Mucho, El Muchos Mucho. Some lazy mofo. Uh, I'm with you on that one. Me too. The Karata Fish, Marshman001. Thank you, everybody. There's probably a need to renew that or uh, refresh that. Okay, where'd I put my fucking pot holder? There it is. Okay, music. I have found myself uh, listening to much, much more classic rock and classic soft rock stuff and finding myself getting vinyls, getting more vinyl. And anybody else up there into the band Sweet? They are the the ballroom blitz band, not Tia Carrere, although she does a great job. And no member of Sweet can look that good in that red dress she wears at the end of Wayne's World. That's all her. But Sweet is a band that made ballroom blitz. Are you ready, boys? Let's go! Like that. Um. Anyway, so I wanted to find that song on vinyl, and then they have another great hit. What's up? You want food? Huh? You're you can go to the bathroom. Hey everybody, my daughter's pooping. <laughs> well, she's gonna hate me. Oh, wait till she's a teenager and, or when she's graduating. I'm gonna embarrass the living shit out of her. Anyways, um, so Sweet, you know, had the big hits, uh, Fox on the Run and Ballroom Blitz. And they uh, started out kind of a smoother, poppier band, Sweet. And no, it's not Mrs. Lippins, but uh, so uh, they started out kind of poppier and then they got harder. And so their first album that got harder was uh, I already forgot the name of it Desolation right was it yeah Desolation Boulevard right and it, it, it's great and the the American release of it has it was not released with Ballroom Blitz and Fox on the Run those were released as singles but the American release has them on there and it's like some cool metal 70s rock sort of arena-ish. It's great. Really, really good. I'm loving it. All right, let's get this food happening, huh? What kind of record player do you use? It's got a round. It's, it goes around. Um, <laughs> it's an audio technic. Uh, it was like a starter one that... Uh, uh, the record store owner I knew at the time suggested. Okay. And let's just use the same old wooden spoon we've been using. Oh, yeah. Fucking lay it on me, baby. Oh, yeah. 
All right. It's not even that sloppy. It looks good, though. Okay, um, so like I was saying, as a child, I remember going to different places, and you could order Sloppy Joes at them. Uh-oh, pickle jar problems. See, this is why this hot glove is so good, because it's got like a rubber tread thing for opening the shit. Ooh. Oh, man, this one's really... There we go. Anyways, um, so I love putting just a couple of pickles on I didn't toast these buns because I feel like it should be like like that, right? It should be like to have like wrinkles and shit in them, right? And then you get your fancy vegetables right next to it. There's a plate. Now, the other thing we're going to have tonight is some frozen waffle fries. So... Oh, these are frozen as fuck right now. I like a soft bun, that's right. Squeezing for the pleasing, something to grab onto, you know what I mean? Sophia Coppola albums, what? This will be 425. You uh you want food yet? It's not quite it's not normally the time we eat yet, but you getting hungry? A little? I feel okay, we'll, we'll eat a little bit. So I just need to, part of my show is showing people the food go in my mouth. You know? yeah, so yeah, yeah, I understand that. People want to see the food go in my mouth. You want to uh, uh, put your helmet back on and wave goodbye? Sure. All right, let's test this out, huh? Why is he eating raw bacon? It's not raw, it's cooked. Yeah, not everything looks like the emoji. I think that's the best way to put it. Yes, come back. No, it's not that camera. You're over here. There you go. This is my child, Nicolas Cage. Anyways. I, mm. I took off Nicolas Cage's uh, skin and I am wearing it His now. face. It's face. Face off. She hasn't seen that one yet. All right, out of here. <laughs> yeah, someone says love the Animal Crossing shirt. Thank you. Oh, someone else says, not the bees. You haven't seen that Nick Cage movie yet either. Neither have I. He gets captured by a cultist and they put this thing on his head that's full of bees, like sticking his face. Not the bees! He's playing Dracula. He's playing Dracula in a movie about Renfield. It's a comedy. Hey, Timmy. This is off subject, but did you get to see the Rescue Rangers movie? I thought it was done pretty well. Yes, and I liked it a lot. And I reviewed it on my letterbox account, and somebody uh, commented about it the, yesterday or last night or something, um, saying it's like corporate and bullshit, blah, 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 blah. And then they end it with, but I haven't seen it. So, like, you can have whatever opinion you want, but you better believe I did not respond to them well. But we hashed it out. So I, and they were pulling out several trolling maneuvers that are classic. Uh, Backpedaling, saying it was my that that now that I got offended and then I'm being insulting. You know, classic backpedaling. They're saying my guy, calling me my guy. That kind of kind of sending him. But here's the thing, I called them out on it. Now sometimes I'll ignore somebody, but sometimes when I think it's worth it, I'll get into it with them. So I did. And I called them out on it, and we hash it out, and we're like buddies now. And they were like, "Yeah, I am being too pretentious." You're right. So a that never happens on the internet, like ever. But b um, part of the reason it worked is because the movie is good, and so I was saying, like, you know, don't be talking about this stuff if you haven't seen it, because what I think is, um, obviously, whatever boring-ass suit at Disney came up with the idea to make a new uh, Rescue Rangers movie, obviously, it was a cynical, soulless cash grab, right? Um, but so was the Lego movie, Right. And the Lego two, Lego Movie two, and uh, the Batman, Lego Batman movie. Those were all the same thing. Cynical as shit, cash grabs. But the people that were given those projects, the the filmmakers and writers and directors, decided, well, here's a shot, and they made something special in each one of those cases. You know. So uh, I love it. You know, I think it was great. And, you know, it's saying something, and it's also kind of uh, poking fun of the nostalgia thing. You know, yeah, the ugly Sonic joke was great. A good two-player Switch game, you mean, like, local? Hey, child! 
What's a good two-player Switch game? Like, if you're both on the couch. Mario Kart? Uh, what else? Kirby Clash. Just Dance 2020. Just Dance. What's that puzzle one we like? It's like puzzle a cheat book. game. Puzzle book? It's what is that, a dollar? Did that cost like two dollars or something? Super Smash Bros. Um, Super Smash Bros. I have more. I got more. Uh, that's it. Okay. Thank you. How many uh, waffle fries do you want? Uh, 50. 50? 10? 10? Okay, so there's a lot of cheap, weird games you can get on the Nintendo Switch online downloading store. And they're saying thank you for your uh, suggestions. Anyways. Um, the Switch online st store where you can download games has a bunch of weird, cheap stuff. Puzzle Book, we have had a lot of fun with. It, well, I think it, it might have been on sale at the time. We got it for like a dollar. It might normally be like three dollars. But... Um, <laughs> You basically, you can, there's a few different modes, but the mode we play, there's like, you can pick a puzzle up to like a hundred piece puzzle, right? And each player is on the, you got a pile of pieces on the side of the screen, right? Player one's on the left, player two's on the right of the puzzle. So you both start putting your pieces in. But you're, it's a competition. So if you get your, if I get all my pieces in first, then I start using her pieces and taking her pieces and putting them in. And so when the puzzle's finished, whoever put the most pieces in wins. It's pretty, it's pretty fun. You know. E.T. Ver yeah, E.T. versus Batman was a was a great joke too. Um I liked the Peter Pan joke. I liked uh the ugly Sonic was great. There was a lot of good jokes in that. Oh Mythic, yeah, it's still in the mail, buddy. <laughs> You're never getting that mailed thing. Uh, turkey burger. Okay, uh, I forgot to look up how long I bake it. <sighs> bake 10 minutes and then another 10 minutes. Okay. We're going to be getting out of here soon. We're also going to make monster cookies without you guys there. Because we've already, you've already seen me make those. Actually, I want to ask that of the Zucchini Boys audience, because I don't remember if I've done the asparagus thing before either. It is, uh, would it be a big no-no to do, like, uh, a repeat? Lego Miserabia. Yeah. As long as you don't repeat the convo, well, that'd be insane. I can't even... Look, I couldn't even repeat today's convo. What is the asparagus wrapped in? That is bacon. And it was broiled with the asparagus. Now, it didn't get crispy well, because it's on top of a very... Uh, you know, it's on top of... A, Vegetable getting steamed with a lot of liquid being released, you know? Oh. I can feel the life flowing back into me. Right? God, I love asparagus and I love bacon. Let's make sure do this. Mmm. This is a good meal. God damn. Look, it's hardly a recipe. You just get, you prepare your asparagus. If you saw me do it, I was bending it, and wherever it snaps, you throw that part away. And then you get olive oil, salt, pepper, whatever. Maybe you could throw other stuff on it if you want to. A little paprika would be good. Uh, garlic powder, sure. Um, then you wrap it in bacon and broil it. Or you can grill it. And that's it. But... Rachel Ray still kind of laid out the instructions very simply for idiots like me. So thank you, Rachel Ray. Lemon pepper, great idea. Yeah, I could have squirted... I have a lemon in the fridge. I could have squirted some lemon juice on there. And also, I maybe could have cooked the asparagus a little bit longer. I do like it when the tips are a little charred. They are. But they could have been a little bit more. Uncle Christian says, Timmy is a sweet girl. Thank you. What makes you say that?
Eat your vegetables even if it's on a pizza. I once I made a pizza that was, I think it was goat cheese, asparagus, and shrimp, but it looked weird because the way I cut the asparagus, it looked strange. Nice crispy breaded hot wings. I haven't really done that. I like the first time chat thing. What, did we get rated or something? Jim Games. All right, cool. We're getting rated? Sweet. Thank you, Jim Gaines, for rating. I hate it when I get rated when I'm almost done. But I guess that's, a, that's probably a common happening. Anyways, uh, welcome everybody. I'm Timmy Williams from the Whitest Could You Timmy Williams from the Whitest Could You Know. And I'm wrapping up my cooking show. Uh, today we made. You know what? I've been bugging me all all night, and I keep forgetting to change it. There we go. Oh. Okay. We made sloppy joes and bacon wrapped asparagus. How many raiders are in here? Oh, wow. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Jim Games. Jim Games. Talk with my mouthful when we have guests. How rude. As Jar Jar would say, how rude. What are we making? There's a little thing up in the corner showing you what I made to do. I can't say on. I gotta feed my daughter. We're going to watch Empire Strikes Back. I'm making her watch it because I played that level of the Lego Star Wars game. And now I want to watch Empire. Hmm. Yeah, hell yeah, Star Wars. Alright, I just put waffle fries in the dishwasher too. They should be clean pretty soon here. Oh, I didn't... No, I did time it. Okay. I guess I am still making stuff. It's just, you know, frozen waffle fries. Do you want some asparagus too, Nick Cage? Do you like the tip parts? You don't like the tip parts of asparagus. Here, I'll get you a good part. This is my, my child, my head? Nicholas Cage. What are you going to turn your head for? Uh, eating food. Oh, okay. Food consumption. Got, got food consumption? Yes. She's only 10. She says words like consumption. Get a fork. Back there. You good. Okay. Here, have a piece of bacon. Do you like the bacon with it or no? No. Nah. No. You're not this is that into the very floppy bacon. There you go, Nick Cage. Try it out, Nick. How is it? Is it tender enough? Mm -hmm. Thumbs up? Cool. Alrighty, I'm gonna wrap up here. You wanna say goodnight to the people? Are you still into watching Empire Strikes Back? Yes I am. Hell yeah. Mm. Delicious asparagus. Delicious asparagus from the peanut gallery. That'll go on your plate. Well, I'll wait till the waffle fries are done, I guess. Or, no. Nah, but, like, till they're halfway done. Hmm. Thank you, everybody. Sorry I was so ticked off at the starting. It was just... I don't like it when I feel like mistakes are focused on. But I also, you know, know that we, as in Whitest Kids, uh, we're different than the average streamer. We're older, probably. Um, and less knowledgeable about stuff. Except for Sam. Sam knows everything now. And I'm not too bad myself, if I do say so myself. But, look at all the stuff I have going on here. And it all works. Um, but, uh, you know, this wasn't our first, uh, it's not our first thing. You know what I mean? Some people, a lot of people who are on stream, this is their first thing. Right? Our first thing was comedy. You know? So this is our second or third or 18th thing. So I still gotta work it out sometimes, you know? Right. Sending love from the army. Where are you, army person? Where are you stationed? Stationed! Sorry, does that happen to a lot when you're in the army? 
God damn, I love this. Thank you. You know what? I do like... Would you guys be into a Sunday afternoon stream again? Because here's the deal. When I do night streams on a weekday, I'm coming from work, and then rush, 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 get over, get stuff done. One reason I was so pissed off about not having the, the notification thing right today is because I had all the time in the world to do it. I mean, I was parenting and doing all this other stuff, but I spent a lot of... I, I got to prepare for the show at a leisurely pace. You know, it was nice. Sunday afternoon stream, right? It's kind of cool. Because I was thinking about what are some of my other favorite streams I've done for the cooking show. New Year's Eve, when I was not at work. It was like 3 or 4 in the afternoon, right? And I, was, I made New Year's Eve uh, stuff. I did like a morning or early afternoon Thanksgiving side stream, I think. You know? Oh. Because even though Trailer Boys is normally on Sunday... I feel like I could do early and go right into Trailer Boys. You know, so maybe people are okay with four hours of different ways, kids doing different things. Trailer Boys are normally on Sundays. This week they're on Monday. That's why I went tonight. This week they're on Monday. They're doing a Memorial Day show tomorrow. Trailer Boys are always on Sunday. You're thinking of News Boys, which doesn't happen anymore. Now, Zook Boys is not a pregame for Trailer Boys. Trailer Boys is my after party. tell Sam I said that he'll, he'll cancel me my god this is this asparagus turned out great someone mentioned summer asparagus yeah dude get your asparagus what would you say people in know mid-april or early may through probably july yeah yeah and it's in strawberries We'll cancel Sam if he tries to cancel you. There's a lot of canceling happening. All right, I gotta flip my waffle fries, and then we're gonna eat these. We're gonna make cookies and watch Star Wars. It's gonna be a very good, not have to wake up for anything day tomorrow. So, good night, everybody. I love you. I guess I should read somebody. A Dubs, uh, try the recipe. You can. The recipes I made tonight, I posted on my Twitter. And my Instagram and Facebook. So whichever corporate poison is your flavor. Uh, I'm Timmy is a nerd on Twitter. Uh, Timmy Williams is pretty on Instagram and Timmy Williams on Facebook. And I posted the recipe for that. It's very simple. You basically uh, trim your asparagus. My method is I grab it and bend it till it breaks. And you throw away the little part that breaks off. And then uh, olive oil, salt, pepper, wrap it in bacon, broil it at 400 degrees in an oven. Well, you bake it. But put on a broiler pan so the drippings from the bacon go somewhere. And then you, uh, and you're good. So. Alrighty, let's raid a person. Do, 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 do. Where'd my keyboard go? Typing without seeing the screen. Let's ha see how we did. Not bad. Oh, who should we? Oh, let's read Ron Funches. He's playing Roller Champions. Who doesn't love a good Ron Funches? Oh, people are suggesting Ron. Look at that. Boom. All right, so Ron's a good buddy. Be nice to him. I mean, how can you not? The guy's like one of the nicest people in the fucking universe, right? So anyways, uh, enjoy Ron. Tell him I say hello. Tell him I miss him and that Margaret says hello. Please tell him those things. All right. I love you guys. Have a good night.